So today I'm back over in LA, where I'm gonna get a sneak peek into Radford, but not Radford as we know it. This is Radford Reborn. We've just gone into production on probably the fastest road car available today, only available in very limited production numbers and exclusive to serious petrol heads with deep pockets and exuding class. So anyway, I couldn't come to LA without popping in to see me mate, Ant Anstead. Yeah, yeah, look at that, a scouser in so, LA. Yeah, <laughs> I know, yeah, beware. So tell me all about your setup, Radford. Yeah, that's a company you've got with Jensen Button. Yeah, that's right. A couple of years ago, um, Jensen and I and a couple of other people, Roger, a lawyer, uh, Izzy, who you met who does marketing, Dan, we, yeah. we established this uh, Radford brand, which is this iconic British brand. It was founded in the late 40s, 1948, by a guy called Howard Radford. He uh, did a coach-built Rolls-Royce. He did minis as well, didn't he? Yeah, by he the 60s. The Radford mini, yeah. That's right. By the 60s, Radford became quite sort of globally famous. Look, that's probably... Gents on texting me now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, um, uh, and and you know, they became quite an iconic coach building brand. And uh, the minis was really what tipped it into celebrity culture. Mm. You know, every m member of the Beatles owned a Radford. I'm going to quiet that because it's so unprofessional. Look, off. Um, it's all them out there going. What are you doing? Yeah, what are you doing in there? Yeah, every every member of the Beatles owned a Radford. Enzo Ferrari, Steve McQueen, Sterling Moss, Peter Sellers launched Radford. So um, it's this really cool, iconic brand. Um, and uh, we revived it a couple of years ago. And this is now, you're sat in the headquarters um, in California of the new You Radford. know, you mentioned the McQueen Radford Mini. Brown one with the beige leather, wasn't right. it? Right. This is creaking. Um, That's you know, my hips. After the game. Somebody in the UK has got that car. Really? They bought it for nothing. It was brought in as a trade-in by an old couple. Is this true? It's absolutely true. Tell it's them, gospel. tell them I, I, they can make 10% and they can sell it to me. Yeah, I'm sure they'll, be, they'll have you enough for that. <laughs> Definitely, answer. Um, so tell me about this car that you've developed. You've got a small collection of clients who are like, you know, paying a lot of money for a very special car. You're only making 62 of them, is that right? Yeah, that's right. So the road going version, which we, uh, we launched, uh, wow, it seems like, only yesterday, but it's uh, probably almost two years ago now. Um, is a uh, there's only 62 of them. It's a. Uh, uh, it's based on a Lotus, isn't it? Mid Asian car. It kind of is, and it isn't. I mean, the original ones you we used it? a. Yeah, it's a Type 62, which was a race derivative of a Europa at the time, built by mm -hmm. Chapman. They only made two of those cars. Just by chance, a couple of days later, I was at one of these local car meets and just happened upon this Lotus Europa, which the car was based on. <laughs> It's interesting as a point of reference. Now this particular car featured on the TV programme Overhauling and was customised by the legendary one and only Chip Foos. Anyway, sorry to interrupt. Let's get back to the interview. And then we partnered with Lotus uh, based on an Exige tub, but the rest of it's Radford. You know, it's Radford space frame, wishbones, uprights, brakes, steering, suspension, you know, everything's Radford. And then we put our own carbon fiber body on it. And then we started to take orders for those cars. And you can see out there, we're, we're producing cars for the customers. Mm -hmm. And each one's different. And then we had a customer who um, sort of expressed an interest in building a race car. And we're like, wait a second. Racing's not a bad idea. Mm -hmm. And we've, you know, as soon as you mentioned that to Jensen, he's like, done. So we, you know, we had an opportunity to um, build a race car and uh, Pike's Peak from an engineering perspective is incredibly challenging. You know, there's yeah. so many issues. It's not it's like, a high altitude thing as well, well isn't it? Altitude is a big problem. I know. So as, a, as, a, as an engineering and as an engineering company, what a great message to tell people. Look, Radford is so in, invested within heritage and invested in racing. And, you know, we want to overcome these engineering problems, aerodynamics, altitude is obviously an issue. Well, that's it. It's not just for the for the racing driver. It's for the car and the way it holds and the way it performs. Mm. And, you know, it's, it's all those things have to be taken into consideration, don't they? Yeah, I mean, if you successfully build a car that finishes Pike's Peak, you, you you basically what stronger message is there than saying it's reliable, robust, fast, capable? Yeah. That's it, guys. It's there. Plus the fact that Pike's Peak's one hundred and one years old, it perfectly aligns with us as a heritage brand as well. Mm. And I'm very impressed by your, your building. And this is a new building, isn't it? Yeah, we've actually only been in here a few weeks, so you're still in the middle of the chaos. Yeah. 
Well, listen, you're going to give me a go on one of these special cars. Well, you have to have a go if you come this far. That's why I've come. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, Dan out there is a, a, a reasonable peddler. Um, I would say go with Jensen, but no, Dan, yeah, listen. Dan's more of a... I want my stomach to stay there. <laughs> oh, I tell you what, go and, go and give Dan a quick nod, and I reckon if you jump in uh, the Burgundy car, which we call Ron. Is that Burgundy or is it Chocolate Brown? Well, we call him Ron Burgundy, so yeah, we're going to go with Burgundy. Sounds good to me. But yeah, take it out. Go drive around California and let me know what you think. Come on, come show me then. All right, yeah, done. This is easy. There you go. It's a tight squeeze, but yeah. there's that belt. There's your other belt. Brilliant. So here's your side. Your other side's just over there. Yeah. Perfect. Yep. Someone with a big belly's been sitting in here. Yeah, me. I'm a bigger <laughs> guy. <laughs> We have only allowed one other non-Radford person in the history of this company go in this car. And he's dead. Hey, he's not dead. <laughs> now we gave this car to Top Gear. Yeah. So Top Gear is yeah. the only journalist that has ever done a review on this car. Same thing. Yep, pop it. So you're... Um, I feel honoured. Yeah, you are honoured. So um, this is the lightest supercar available on the market today. Yeah, pull the rear. Please. Oh, this is the lightest supercar available on the market today. 980 kilograms. This particular model, 605 brake horsepower. What's, what's a Formula One car? It's quite uh, close, isn't it? Isn't it nine, about? No, 798 kilograms. Yeah. So, yeah. About 70 difference? Yeah, it's not a lot hey, difference. Dan? Yep, you're good. Um, and the whole, the whole point of the car is it was designed around a, a car designed in the late 1950s by Colin Chapman called the Type 62. Mm -hmm. And this is a modern Play. version of that yeah. car. So uh, have that, fun. Was that the mid-engine car? Again? Yeah, you got to let me start it first. Engine. Yeah, I had a yeah. Europa engine. Yeah. You yeah. ready? Can't wait. Yeah, do. Just yep. be very, very careful start. with that guy. It does not a great drive. Time it up and use the power. <laughs> okay. yep. It's basically a racing car, isn't it, for the yeah. road, though? I'm yep. surprised of the finish inside, the leather, yeah. you know, the stitching. Mm -hmm. It's like, normally when you get into a car like this, it's very bare and very basic. Yep. But this is a... Uh, we wanted to provide a little bit of that, right? Yeah, um, you know, and, and this is still our development car, really, right? It's not even our final car; it's our development car. So, I mean, but even from like the detachable steering wheel to just little nuances like that. So that just that just clips off. You get in, then you just put the steering wheel. Yep. On. It's a bit like the Mercedes Gullwing, where it used yep. to pull forward. Yeah, we got lift off. Wonder if I got it. Hold on, let me see. Let me just double check this. Yeah, the immobilizer. Yeah, the immobilizer. Yeah, that's the one. It's off. Let me. Let me check the immobilizer. Oh, he killed the power for it. So close the door? Yeah, close it. Watch your fingers. Solid cup twos on it, yeah. I just love the way it sounds though. I mean, that doesn't get old at all ever. Now, in our client cars, we actually have a way better hydraulic lift than this one. So, the nose, so we're able to get that nose up higher. This is what we've learned. Screams, it just wants to be heard. Yeah, it's one of them cars, it, it struggles when it's going slow, doesn't it? That's the thing, you know, and you know, with us testing it and Jensen testing it, a lot of it was like, I mean, the car just wants to be pushed. You know, and if you look at it, it's got no power steering, no traction control, no ABS, no, you know, driving aids is meant for the, for the purest of car drivers. So how much of Lotus is this? Just the chassis. The engine? The engine is, I mean, technically it's a Toyota block. Yeah. So technically it's, but everything's been stripped out because, you know, in a Lotus you're not going to get 605 horsepower on the Lotus engine, you know? Wow. Yeah, that's second gear. That is, that is, you know, 
it is meant to be, to be pushed. What about police? You don't worry about them? Oh, we'll find out. We'll find out, right? You'll outrun them yeah. anyway. Yeah, you got to worry about them when they catch you. It's only a crime when you get caught. <laughs> yeah, no. But no, I mean, it, this is road legal. It's registered, everything. So uh, what would this do to the gallon? You know, uh, it drinks it like it's like it's in the desert. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't even know. I haven't even checked that, actually. But, I mean, you've got a supercharged 605 horsepower engine, a V6, right, 305 liter. But this thing likes to eat gas. Listen, you own a car like this, you can certainly afford the petrol. Right. So we're so used to cars being very drive-by-wire, so even the steering wheel. Yeah. Right, you don't have to hold it. Like, you know, if you have a car that's, let's say, there's a cop right there. If you have a guy that's like a Tesla or anything like that, right? The Tesla will do all the hard steering for you. On this car, if you don't pay attention to the steering of it, your car will make you look like you're drunk because you need that. It wants you to be present, right? It wants you to pay attention. Let me check the rear view mirror. Yeah, right, making sure the cop is not. Eighty miles an hour. Yeah. Third gear. Yeah, it doesn't even feel like we're going ninety. It's not ninety, yeah. We were going ninety yeah. a little bit ago, but it doesn't even feel like it. It's so light. Yeah. So light, just wants to take control and drive away. You just want the road to be empty, don't you? Yeah, so that's you the thing. Let it go. Want to take off. It's got a lot of good downforce, and it holds, hugs the road very well. Um, it doesn't want to just idle by. It wants to really see it's smooth when you take off and just. And I just love the way this car sounds, right? For a for a supercharged V6, it sounds very. Very Formula One inspired sound, especially when you're outside. So tell me this, you know when it's going around the track and it's doing top speeds yep. and it's cornering. Yeah. And the, the brakes are being touched. What, mm -hmm. What's that little squeal that goes off sometimes? That brakes over here? Oh no, that's you know, that's that's the mechanics of braking, right? The mechanics of braking is when you have something hot and you apply a lot of pressure, it unevenly yeah. breaks. But is it like that on the race cars as well? Yeah. On the like mean, Formula One yeah. cars. Oh yeah, yeah, hundred percent. That's very normal, especially in high-speed cars. You're going to get a lot more because you're going really fast and you slow down really fast. You're going to get a little bit of uh, squeaking. And this has carbon, you know, carbon brakes. I mean, this has got some really huge stopping for us. AP Racing provides the brakes for, these, for this car. That's what we partnered with, and they're phenomenal brakes. I mean, Formula One uses AP brakes, uh, NASCAR, I believe. Don't quote me on it, but I believe both of those. Yeah, I noticed the calipers, and I wondered what the AP was. Yeah. Do they do all the Formula One cars? Yeah, yeah I believe, yeah. I, yep, and they're actually getting into NASCAR right now. You probably come out at the busiest part of the day. It's like I know, peak right? hour, isn't it? It's Cali rush hour. You're a very brave man coming out <laughs> in LA traffic. Right? In a manual, are, first thing. It's, it's, it's a manual. Backups, isn't it? It's oh, my goodness. Easy drivers. It's a lot of engineering features. You see, we got the cameras on all sides for no mirrors, yeah. rear view camera. Alright, oh, so they're your mirrors, yeah. These yeah. are your mirrors. Yep, those That's are your mirrors. incredible, I wonder what they were. Yeah. The little cameras as well, yeah, I see, yeah. Yeah. Wow. A little bit of engineering there. No, you know, it fits nice, it sits well. Again, it's a car that you take out because you enjoy the drive. It's not something you... Have you ever owned a motorcycle before? Yeah. They're very purposeful, right? You cannot not pay attention. Yeah. Or otherwise you risk... Well, it's, you feel the road, don't you? There's not yep. that soft suspension. You feel every single hit. Yep. And it really makes you be part of the experience. Yep. You know, I mean, you've got all the super-performance cars, super-performance cars, and, and a lot of them the people take to the track, whether it's Porsche GT3 or anything of that nature. And, you know, people buy those cars and take the track, and they're like, I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a crazy, I'm a very good driver. I'm a, I'm a race car driver now. Right, and it's well because the car is doing all the math for you. Right, let's be fair. 
you know, those cars are designed with the ECUs to, to compensate for your lack of, you know, I think, wasn't it, wasn't it um, Prost when he was racing against Senna? Didn't he have the first of those cars? Yeah. Where it took everything away from the, well, not everything away from the driver, but, you know, the, the brake and the suspension, everything was like electronic, wasn't it? It compensated for him, yeah. There's no way that Senna could compete against a car like no. that. It was a robotic car, wasn't it? Had this car, right, tested and just put miles on this. I mean, this is the car that really has provided the groundwork for our flying cars. Without this car, we couldn't do what we did. I mean, you're, you're buying a piece of heritage here, right? Whether it's from Radford, whether it's, you know, Jensen, Button, and Anne said, you know, basically built this car. I mean, you're buying a piece of history with them. And the ability to customize the interior to whatever you want, you know, color-wise, material-wise, from carbon fiber to suede to, to Alcantara to leather. So does the client, does the customer choose? Yes. That is part of the experience is complete best boat coach building. Yeah. Down to the you know stitching, you know what do you what do you oh, want? Come on, you're being overtaken by a bike. I know, right? Well, this is California. <laughs> your bike is just, bikes win in California when it comes to the traffic. You're not gonna see this car everywhere, and and it's only going to create a sense of oh man, this thing is amazing because I don't see it very often. And when you look at it, when you step outside, and when you look at it again, you'll see from every angle there's something beautiful about it there we go yeah, look at that have you seen these at all these are the Bremont dials they actually work wow yeah stopwatches track watches what are these these just dummies so lights uh i've got a little bit of a hydraulic lift in the front lights suspension up and down there we go Speaking of cops right there. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, two cops. Oh, look at this. Yeah, look at that. Arrest. California, yep. Yep. Welcome to LA. Right. way to spend the day in LA. headquarters thank you so much yeah top man yeah <laughs> well that was exhilarating and you can just imagine how difficult it was to film in la rush hour traffic and if you'd like to see a lot more of the car and jensen really put the car through its paces then you can check it out on top gear's channel and if there's any serious petrol heads out there brave enough to own a piece of the action then put your money where your mouth is and own a piece of automotive history one of the last remaining 62. Thank you for watching this episode of Classic Obsession. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe. And join me next time for more fun in LA when I drop in and see my mate, urban outlaw, Magnus Walker.